to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. It took eight years to harness the best of our energies and skills and a $24 billion investment. In the summer of 1969, the dream was reality. The Apollo 11 spacecraft sitting majestically atop a giant Saturn rocket, poised for its momentous voyage. By 9.30 on the morning of the launch, the temperature already was in the 90s. The giant countdown clock ticked off the final moments. There was tension, there was excitement. The cameras whirred. Journalists from 56 countries chattered in a multitude of languages. There was then a momentary hush as Jack King's voice bellowed from launch control, nervously counting down those moments to history. One, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. The rocket, standing 36 stories high, slowly inched upward. We stood in utter amazement. The ground rumbled. There was a deafening roar as seven and a half million pounds of thrust pushed the rocket and three astronauts toward a quarter of a million mile journey. We had seen many launches before, but this was like none other. A chill raced through all of us. I found myself caught by the emotion of the moment, shouting with others, go baby, go, as the now distant spacecraft streaked across the blue sky. There was joy and elation, and there were tears of relief and pride. Americans were on the way to the moon. Eagle, you're looking great, coming up nine minutes. The world held its breath for four days. And finally, as 600 million people were glued to their television sets, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin broke the tension at precisely 4.18 p.m. on the afternoon of July 20th. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong and Aldrin stayed a scan two hours and five minutes, cavorting about the moon and scooping up 46 pounds of lunar rock. They had paved the way for others. During six additional lunar landings, 12 astronauts collected 843 pounds of lunar rocks and soil, took 15,000 pictures, and left five scientific stations on the moon, radioing back many kinds of useful information. And some found the lunar surface an out-of-this-world playground. I was strolling on the moon one day in, in a merry, merry, merry month of December. December. No, May, 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 the month May, that's year. right. But Armstrong and Aldrin will always be remembered as the first. And what of all that moon rock? Extensive study, for one, has enabled scientists to determine that the moon was condensed out of a cloud of solar gas at the same time the Earth did, about four and a half billion years ago. What, you may ask, does this mean to us now? Some scientists say we can look to the moon as a source of materials. That extraction of lunar iron and oxygen is possible right now. And there is growing enthusiasm by Princeton physicist Gerard O'Neill for the colonization of space. Using raw materials mined and refined on the moon, he visualizes solar-powered space colonies inhabited by millions. It's more than just a dream. The research has advanced beyond the blueprint stage. And man has already reached beyond his imagination. By landing on the moon, observed science fiction writer Arthur Clarke, the Apollo astronauts opened the door to infinity. And that just may be the challenge ahead in the next century as we reach for Mars and the stars that will forge our next frontier. This is Marvin Scott reporting.